Empiricism is the idea that the mind is a blank slate from birth. That we observe the world of individual things, then we generalize these observations and see patterns of behavior. And from these patterns we arrive, as, arrive at concepts. Then we invent ways to represent these concepts through symbols and language is created. Using language we express our experiences and their generalization. This linguistic expression of our experience and its generalization is called knowledge. It is not merely our private experience, but something that others can understand and potentially agree upon. That is called knowledge. Now, there are many problems in empiricism, but from the scientific perspective, the main problem is generalization. This problem of generalization has many distinct but related parts. The first part is that when we generalize, we tend to reduce the variety of this world into a fewer concepts. The question is, how many such concepts? The method of generalization simply says that we must have as few concepts as absolutely necessary. And according to Occam's razor, we should not multiply entities beyond necessity. Which means that in generalization, we have to find the fundamental ideas. But there is no criterion in empiricism by which we can know if some idea is fundamental or not. For example, in classical physics, we generalized all observations into the ideas of particles and waves. But who is to say that particle and wave are fundamental concepts? As science has later shown, the notion that some, some things are particles and some things are waves is a false idea. Things are both particles and waves. Yet, they are not the kinds of particles and waves that we see in observation. So we have to throw away particle and wave and come up with something entirely different. But the problem is that we don't know what type of observation must be used to generalize from because particles and waves work quite well for practically all those things that physics was studying thus far. This means to find a new idea, we have to look at something that physics hasn't looked at so far. You may be surprised to hear this, but the method of generalization from the particular things is full of holes. We don't know what particular instances we should generalize from because nothing in our experience is screaming out to be generalized. Whatever you generalize from seems to be your personal preference. Then again, every time you generalize, you ignore some features of the particular things. For example, a particle is an infinitesimal point and billiard balls and planets are very large objects. When we generalize planets and billiard balls into a particle, we strip them of a very obvious attribute, namely size. Now the question is, are we ignoring something important in order to force generalization? What if, the pro what if the properties that we are ignoring to create this generalization are crucial to that thing? The second problem is that even after generalization, there is no way to know <clears throat> that anything such as the general concept even exists. For example, nobody has ever seen an infinitesimal particle. Nobody has ever seen mass or gravitational force. All we see is motion or change. We never see particles, mass, or gravity. As a simple example, the mass of one kilogram is defined as that which accelerates at 9.6 meters per second on Earth. So mass is not defined or measured by itself. We rather measure motion, and then we say that something that moves like this must have this property. But it is entirely possible that someone else can come up with another way of explaining the same motion which is based on equally unperceivable ideas. Most people don't know that all concepts of science are unperceivable. Nobody has seen a point particle, an electromagnetic wave, a gravitational field, mass, or charge. This is purely an invention of the human mind. When it works well, we say that it must be true because it works so well. But well, the fact is that even if it works today, we may find something new tomorrow where it doesn't work. This has happened many times in science already. For example, Newton initially proposed a corpuscular theory of light by extending the idea of particles in case of gravity. 
Nobody talks about this theory today because we found the interference phenomena which the corpuscular theory could not explain. So we said that light is not particles but waves. Then a few centuries passed and we found black body radiation where we could measure that light is indeed you know detected as particles but you know collectively it behaves as waves. Thus we went from corpuscles to waves to something that is neither of these two things. Therefore the idea that because it works it must be true is generally false. And it has been proven false many times. Our previous theories have been thrown out and new theories have been proposed. Therefore because science is changing most people got tired of claiming that science represents the truth. They adopted a more tentative approach to science where they say that it works today in so far as we can tell. But if you find something that doesn't work tomorrow, then we will change science. Now at any given time, there are many things that any scientific theory is unable to explain. For example, the standard model of particle physics only explains about 5% of the matter in the universe. The other 95% is supposed to be dark matter and dark energy for which we have no current explanation. So we are quite certain that the standard model doesn't explain everything. And even within this 5% which the standard model explains, it doesn't predict everything correctly. For example, neutrinos are predicted to be massless particles but observations so show that they must have mass. So not only do we have a partial explanation, but even this partial explanation contradicts observations in some cases. In that sense, the standard model, which is considered the pinnacle of scientific achievement today, is incomplete and it contradicts known facts. Does this mean that we throw out the standard model and start fresh with something else? This generally doesn't happen. We keep proclaiming the truth of the standard model because we have spent so much effort in building it and even when we know that it is com incomplete and contradictory to the facts, we keep sticking to it. While in theory we say that science builds models and we can change the models if the need arises, in practice we are far from, you know, far more attached to our scientific models unless something new comes around. Thomas Kuhn called this, you know, the problem of paradigm shift. An enormous amount of data has to accumulate to repudiate a theory before we will reject it. Until that time we keep tinkering with the model hoping that somehow or the other we will be able to fix it. And generally the, prob and generally the people who fix these things have to face an enormous amount of resistance from the established ortho orthodoxy because people have grown accustomed to the established model even if they know that it doesn't work correctly in all the cases. The more successful a theory, the harder it is to change it and get broad acceptance from others. So in summary, there is a problem of generalization from the particulars because we don't know which particular thing we must generalize from. Then if this generalization works, we still have no empirical evidence for the concepts themselves. Because we only observe motion or change, but the concepts that are used to explain this motion or change remain outside empirical verif verification. Then even if we find that in some cases that the theory contradicts experiment, we are unable to reject it unless we have an alternative theory. Even though we know that it is broken, we keep using it as far as, it be, as, as, far as we can. So there is a methodological problem here, namely that we will never find a way that will tell us how to do better generalization, which means potentially science will remain incorrect forever. We will just build some theories which will live for some time until we find a problem and create a new theory. So science based on empirical method has no known end. It is an activity that produces some benefits, but since it never ends, we can never say that we have obtained the true and complete knowledge. The theories of science are just like the products of engineering such as roads and bridges. Today you build some road and bridge and it will be useful for some decades. And when the road or bridge has become old then you tear it down and build a new one and hopefully it will be a better one and last longer. 
Also, like the road and bridge, there are some limitations for the use of the theory. The road or bridge is suited only for some type of vehicles and will not work for every kind of transport you can imagine. Similarly, the theory will work in some cases and break down when you try to use it in every scenario. This led some philosophers to coin the term instrumentalism regarding scientific theories. Like the toolkit of a workman has many tools and the workman decides which tools to use when. Similarly, science must be treated like the toolkit of a workman. The workman knows which tools to use and that is his expertise. He doesn't use a hammer to tighten a screw, so a theory also cannot be used everywhere. And there will always be many kinds of partially useful theories. There is nothing sacred about the theory because you can replace one tool with a better tool tomorrow. You never say that you have the complete toolkit for all the jobs and you never claim that your tools are perfect. You just use these tools and get a job done today and hope that you will have better tools tomorrow. Instrumentalism is the most sustainable philosophy of science today. And in this philosophy there is simply no claim that these tools can solve all problems, that these are the best tools or even that we will continue to use the same tools tomorrow. Science is good for here and now for the chosen set of problems we want to solve to the extent that we are approximately able to solve them for our needs until the time we discover some blatant limitations. We don't know what we will do if the tools break down or we find a new problem that the tools cannot solve. So instrumentalism takes out all claims of truth, reality, perfection, and intellectual superiority from science. The craftsman works with tools and the scientist works with theories which are just like tools. The tools are imperfect, but they are the best tools we have today until we find some different or better tools. So this is the problem of empiricism. Namely, there are no guarantees. Things may or may not work. We reserve the right to change everything at any time and this knowledge comes at, at a huge cost which has to be borne by the public. This approach to science would not be acceptable to many people who would like to equate science with the pursuit of truth and the discovery of the laws of nature which do not change with time. But since the empirical method cannot guarantee this and history has shown that laws keep changing, how do you justify that science is indeed very important to society and we must invest in it? This is achieved by deception in science, by which the public which pays for science has to be kept in the dark about the methodological problems, otherwise they will stop paying for science. If you tell the public that the billions of dollars we are spending are for tentative and incremental improvements and it is not guaranteed to be true, that it may not always work, and that it can change any time in the future, thereby wasting your investments, then the public will question this investment. Scientists want to stay away from this questioning and suppress any dissent that can create doubts about what they are doing. Just like the tool manufacturer doesn't talk about the problems in his tools, because his goal is to sell the tools and profit from it. Similarly, scientists don't talk, like to talk about the problems in empiricism. So most people think that the scientific method stands on solid foundation and blindly believe it because the scientists keep proclaiming it. 